so here's a, a quick agenda. Um, I know we have 45 minutes allocated. It's unlikely we'll use that whole time, but we will allocate plenty of time at the end for questions. So what I'll do is I'll kind of talk about what it is um, that we're calling that motion diagnostics, give you a, a background of how we came up with the product, and then it, go into an actual demo. So you will be able to see all the, the, the features of the product that, um, in, in its form with real data. Now, because we have so many people logging on to this webinar, um, everybody is muted, but please, if you have questions, use the question control bar to the right. What I will do is I will try to answer the questions real time, if it makes sense during the presentation. If not, I will get to the questions at the end, and if I don't get to everybody's questions, then definitely somebody will follow up, up with you after the presentation. The other thing that will happen, for those that have registered, you will get an, a follow-up email with a link to the presentation, as well as a link to the recording, so we are recording today, so you can watch it again, or you can share it with your coworkers. Okay, so let's get started. So, so NetMotion as a company, you know, we've been involved in many major mobile deployments for many years. Um, we, we started in about 2000, and uh, since then we have over a million end users today. Now, we've primarily been focused on three key aspects to a successful mobile deployment, and that is connectivity, visibility, and control. Um, everybody on the call today is a customer, so you, you should be very familiar with these features of our product. Um, one of the things that we found throughout the years is, is really when it came to troubleshooting remote connections, and that led us into diagnostics, which is our fourth aspect of a successful mobile deployment. Now, when you think about your end users in the field, you know, inevitably, even though our product does a lot for their connection and we really can make that connection better, there's still going to be times when they have issues. Now, what we heard over and over again from many customers is when a field worker or a mobile worker reports an issue with, that they're having, the description can be very, very vague. You know, it can be something as simple as, you know, they can't connect or they believe the application stopped working or maybe they, they think the network is down. You know, inevitably what that leads up to is you have a field worker who's unable to do their job. And it becomes really difficult for an IT help desk to, to troubleshoot when this is sort of the description of the problem, right? There's someone out there in the field. Unless they're, you know, an IT consulting company, it's, more, it's most likely that the description is going to be one of these. So when you think about any remote connection, you know, and this is pretty much generally true, the same path exists from the device all the way back into the application itself. Okay, if you think about looking at this diagram here, you have the device, it has some sort of local connection, it is most likely traversing the internet, although that could be a private network. It, it is most likely traversing some sort of firewall, some sort of VPN, whether it's, it's NetMotion's VPN or another VPN. And then it might get all the way to that point, but then it still needs to traverse the internal network into the application itself. Now, for an IT help desk, this, is very this can be very difficult to troubleshoot over the phone each connection point along the way to determine when the user says that their application is not working or that they, their, their network is down, what does that exactly mean? Where in this path is the problem occurring? And that's where we came up with NetMotion Diagnostics. What Diagnostics is, is essentially with the push of a button, we can run a series of tests along each connection point automatically for the user. And once the tests are done, we can send the results up to a console so the IT administrator can then look at the results. This, again, is literally done with the push of a button. Um, it can be scripted. And the end user gets some information back, but the, the goal really is meant for the IT administrator to then look at the, the full details. If the end user is, is a savvy end user, they, they could drill into the details as well, and maybe they can even troubleshoot their own problems so they don't need to open a ticket. But again, the, the main intent is that this would be sent up to a console. The IT administrator can automatically get an alert to let them know that a test has been run, and they can look at the results and start working on the problem. Now, when, when I say tests, um, it's an extensive amount of tests, and, and I'll show you some of the details of the tests themselves. But again, at each point in the connection, we are looking at a lot of things. So at the device level, for example, we're not just looking to see, you know, does, does the adapter have an IP address? You know, we're looking at all kinds of information uh, in terms of the adapter. We're even looking, if it's a cellular adapter, to see 
maybe it's LTE capable, but it's dropped down and it's got a lower speed connection and that could be the problem. Um, we also will grab GPS information if that's available so we can even show the location where the user ran the test. And then we'll look at things like the local connection, you know, is there Wi-Fi there, but is the Wi-Fi accurate? We do an internet test. The internet test that we do is actually to a portal that we host, so that way we're, we can guarantee the uptime of that portal and not rely on some public address that we're, we're accessing, and maybe the problem is that that site is actually down. We will actually go to our portal. We will validate that there's no latency lost between that portal and the device, We'll even pull down content from that portal and validate the integrity of the content. So again, the important part there is that when we say we're doing an internet test, you know, we truly are testing the internet. And it, there, there have been cases we've seen where, you know, a device might have an actual connection, so it has a network connection, but maybe the, you know, there's so much interference in the connection, or or, or the network is so saturated that they can't pass traffic. So we can actually test things like that. Now, not only do we do these end-to-end -end tests, but you can create your own tests. Now, this is the part that, that when we first talked about this product that, that got me the most excited, you know, is I thought back to, you know, my early help desk days. And what sort of tests would you run when you, you know, were trying to validate if you could get through a firewall or if you could connect to a particular application or if that server was, was active and listening for a particular port? And we give you the ability to create these customized tests. So again, we're going to always do the end-to-end -end tests to verify the user, the device can get into the network. These are tests you can run to validate once inside the network, can they reach the applications? You know, can they actually route traffic internally? Can they reach the next hop? Can you do a TCP connect to the application server itself to validate that you can get all the way to that point? And, and then the results of that will really help you to immediately go to the to start fixing the problem. So rather than running all, you know, all these tests over the phone, you can immediately go and start working on the problem itself. Now here's an example. Um, I, I will show you actual data so you can see more details, but here's just an example of what the end user would see. So again, you know, the test is, can be run with a push of a button. The end user will get some basic information, you know, sort of the, the green checkbox is good and, and the red is bad. Um, we will also give them some details of what we think the root of the problem is. So we'll give them a, you know, a basic description that you know, maybe they're at a hotspot and they, they haven't logged into the hotspot yet. We'll actually validate that. If they want, as I mentioned, they could drill in and look at the details of each test, but most likely an end user is going to just look at the high level message and you know, the nice part is they know that this has been sent up to a console for the administrator and that someone's going to be working on the problem. The test results are kept for 30 days. Um, you can also optionally put some, some notes in there. So if an, an end user runs a test, they could add some notes to say, you know, maybe a description of, of their, what they think the problem is, um, really up to them. On the console itself, and I, I will show you this live, this is what it'll look like. So one of the things that's really great, if you look at the lower screen, like I mentioned, if GPS is available, not only will we you know, run the series of tests and, and show the results, but we will also show where the user was located. Now, this, this new product and this new feature was really driven around customer requests. So again, over the years, talking with customers, even working with our own help desk and understanding the difficulty of troubleshooting remote workers, a lot of different requests started coming in as we started building this, and one of them was, not only do I want to see the results of this test, but I want to see where they were. So I can, you know, maybe understand that typically when someone's in this location, that's when they seem to have connectivity problems. So again, this helps paint sort of a bigger picture of what your network looks like. Now the other thing with diagnostics and test, test results is what went hand in hand with that is alerting. So, you know, because we're giving the, the end user the ability to run these tests, it would be valuable if we could alert you that a test has been run and that it has failed. So we have added the ability to do alerting, full alerting on diagnostics. So what you can do is the alert can be sent via email or SMS text. And if you think about that, you could have something like an email system that's tied into your help desk. So maybe that creates a workflow. So I know that when a test is run and it fails, it can automatically email a help desk and 
uh, you know, work into a ticketing sy system so someone can immediately be notified of the problem and start working on the problem. We've also some added some additional alerts into the product. Now, you, now that we started with alerting, the great part about this is this is a, a feature that will continue to grow. One of the, the really valuable alerts we added, which we, we had a lot of requests for, is the ability to alert when a device goes over a certain data usage in a period of time. So as a simple example, let's say I want to be alerted when a device goes over a gig of data in a 24-hour period. You know, if you think about cellular spend, and again, this is on cellular here, if you think about cellular spend, you know, a device going over a gig in a day, that would be an alarming event. So that would be something you would definitely want to know about. Now, um, in a real-world example, as we were testing this product ourselves, we act, I actually set up this alert, and I got a notification that a device went over a gig. And I reached out to that person, and they, didn't, they had no idea. So, you know, a lot of times, because LTE speeds are so fast, you know, a lot of times users may not realize that what they're doing is, is actually over a cellular connection. Okay. Um, sorry, a question came in there. So, uh, again, so that's a, a valuable alert. We can also alert off app, um, cellular usage in terms of inactivity. So kind of the opposite scenario is the first one I described, but this is more if you have a very large deployment of adapters. Maybe you want to get alerted in if, a, if an adapter hasn't been used in, say, six months, or maybe it's even three months, and that could be something to tell you that, okay, I'm paying for this adapter a monthly fee, and it hasn't been used in an extended amount of time, so I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to reach out to, you know, to that user to find out why, why are they not using you know, this adapter, or maybe, maybe it's one that I just sort of lost account for. And so this is a good way to really watch your spend. Okay. Now, here's an example of what those alerts would look like. Again, they can come as a text message or an email. Uh, optionally, you can add some detail around them. So when you create an alert, you know, you, ha you have some un understanding of, of what the intent of the alert was. Um, but I'll show you some examples. So let's jump into that. Now, in terms of running the tests, there are really three ways this can be done, okay? And then there's a fourth one that's kind of an interesting concept that, that could be used in, in several ways. But the basic three ways are this. First off, you know, if you're running mobility, um, again, mobility is not required to, to run the diagnostics, but if you are running mobility, there's some en enhanced features. And one of them is you can right-click on the icon, the mobility icon, and just click on Diagnose Network Problems. So again, this is something the end user would initiate. The other option is you could take the, you know, the Run Diagnostics button, which is, you know, some are calling the Easy button, put it on the, the, the desktop, or maybe pin it to the tray. And this could be a place where you could just tell the end users, OK, if you have a problem, double click this button. It's going to run a series of tests. Or you could even brand that button yourself. So here's the exact same test, but it's branded more to you know, something my company would understand or maybe my end users would understand better. So again, this is where you can just do some training with the end users, tell them anytime you have an issue, double click this icon. The test itself takes about a minute. You know, it will depend on the, the, the level of custom tests you have run. You know, generally speaking, the internet connectivity tests and the general tests are going to take about a minute. But if you have a lot of custom tests, those could potentially take longer, especially if one of them is failing. Now, the fourth option is these tests are actually scriptable. So you can run this test from a command line. Now, what's interesting about that, if you think about how you might be using mobility today, and especially if you have our policy module, what you could do is you could create a policy rule to say, if a device goes, you know, sort of disconnected, or it, if a device disappears for, say, more than two minutes, and what that means is the device cannot connect to the mobility server for, for at least two minutes, go ahead and automatically run a test, because I believe in that scenario something is going wrong with that device. Um, you know, or you could even do something, if you're suspicious maybe about your cellular connection, you could say something like, any time that a device starts using its air card, maybe I want to start running a test then. You know, just maybe for a period of time to gather some data because you're troubleshooting a particular problem. Okay? A um, few quest need to questions came in. Uh, I will definitely get to those questions, so don't worry. So, um, so let me log in and show you what it looks like. 
Now, the question that just came in, which, which I'll touch on here, is, is they were asking about you know, locality and diagnostics. And as you can see here, if, you, if you've seen locality before, this console should look fairly familiar, although there's a, some additional tabs now. Locality is the vehicle to deliver this feature. So while we're, you know, we're sort of talking about it as a separate product, if you will, it really is a feature, and we're using the abilities of locality to deliver that. Now, what's great about that is locality or diagnostics is a cloud offering. So the nice part about this, if you wanted to try this out yourself or you wanted to you know, purchase it, it's very easy for us to spin up an instance of a cloud. You, again, you'll get the full, full alerting, the full diagnostics, and the, the console you would log into would be hosted in the cloud. So what I'm looking at here is basically the results of you know, many tests being run. So you can see, you know, as an admin, I get a pretty good view right away. This is a warning. Um, obviously, all these tests or sorry, all these tests passed. This one had a failure. If I scroll down and let's just pick one here, we'll pick this one here. This is the administrator view. So you know what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on essentially the test that failed and then also give the probable root cause. So in this case, it was a, a custom test that someone had developed. I can look at the details, and I could see in this case what we were trying to do is connect to an internal host on port 23. So we were trying to tell that to this internal host, and essentially that, that connection timed out. So what's great about this, what this tells me as you know the IT help desk or the administrator, is my end user is able to get all the way into the network because all of these other tests passed, but they're unable to connect directly to that particular server on that port. So now I have a, you know, a narrow focus on where to start troubleshooting. You know, is it that the client's I, it own IP is not routable inside there? Did a firewall rule change? Is it possible that that host we're trying to connect to, that you know, something has crashed and, and it's not listening on that port anymore? If you notice also, in this case, in this test, I show where the user went, was when they ran that test. So again, this is very useful if they happen to be having problems in a particular area, location. You could go there and you could actually run the test. You could see exactly where they were. Now, again, I'm just looking at a, a particular failure. If I want to look at all tests, just to give you an example of some of the things that we run, um, I can scroll through here. And I'm just going to pick this one, the internet connectivity. So again, we have extensive details in every test. So here's an example that I mentioned with internet connectivity. What we're doing is we're not just validating that you know you can connect to the internet. We're looking at things such as latency. You know, can I resolve a host? And again, this is our host that we're resolving, so we know that the host is up. You know, is there latency? Am I getting any packet loss when I'm pinging that host? Can I actually load a page off that host? So can I actually pull down content from that host? And can I validate the content itself? So again, we're doing a, a very extensive amount of tests. So in the event that you run into a problem that is maybe unclear, you know, based off just looking at obvious information, you can drill down in this. You can work with your, you know, whoever your service provider is if this is you know, a problem at their location, and give them all of these details. If I go back up here and I look at the network interfaces, again, like I mentioned, we're not just looking to see does it have an IP address. We're looking at all kinds of information here. So we're looking at the Wi-Fi network. We're looking at information about the device itself. We're looking at you know what, what's the next hop. It's a lot of detailed information that you know if you really needed to troubleshoot to this level, you would have. Okay. So let me go over to configuring diagnostics. Now configuring it is is truthfully very very simple. Um, essentially, you know if you look at this top button, it's either on or off. Now this is going to turn on all of the, the standard tests that we run. In addition to that, there, there you can create your own custom tests. So here is where you can take a look at adding a custom test. And as I mentioned, there are several tests that you can run here. So what's great about this is, is this is going to validate that you can actually connect to the internal application. One of the ones that I mentioned early on that I really like is the TCP connect. You know, like, like I mentioned, back in you know, my help desk days, this is sort of our standard test. You know, this would be the standard test to validate routing is OK, and there's no firewall blocking the port that we're trying to connect on. 
You can also do additional things, though. You can do a trace route. If your main application is a web app, you can actually test the web application, you know, validate. You can do a get. Um, you can ping the next hop. And you can essentially stack these tests up so they'll, all of the tests will be run you know, in a series. And then the results will be shown to the administrator. Okay, I know a couple of questions have come in, so I'll, I'll definitely get to those. Um, just a few more clicks here. We're, we're doing really well on time. So. Um, so the next piece, let me show you alerting. So alerting, you know, as I mentioned, there's several new alerts we added. I'm just going to show you what you can do with alerting. If you look at this dropdown, these are the alerts that we've added. Now, we've been talking specifically about mobile diagnostics. So if I look at the diagnostics alert, what I can do here is I can say, hey, alert me every time a test fails. And again, this is where I can send it via text. I can send it via an email. I can even send it via syslog. I can put additional information in there. So maybe this is, you know, Maybe it's a critical time and I want to set up an alert just for you know, a couple of days to say, OK, we know we're testing or we're doing a major deployment. If anybody runs a test that fails, I need to be alerted immediately. I can do multiple alerts or alert multiple destinations. And you know, one of the nice things about the email is, you know, again, that can trigger some internal workflow. So it could send an email directly to maybe your help desk have that go into a ticketing system, have a ticket opened, and you know, IT is already on it. The other alert that I gave the example of is app, app, adapter usage. This again, this can be a really valuable tool. We've got some, some recent customers actually that are using this because they had extremely high unexpected overages. And you know, again, a lot of times, depending on the end user or depending on the application, even depending on the device itself, a lot of times there might be an app on a particular device that is running some sort of update that you're not necessarily aware of, and that happens to be running over cellular. This is a good way for you to track that and be alerted you know, proactively before a small problem becomes a big problem. So again, you can put pretty much any sort of threshold you want to do here over the last couple of days. Um, you know, Maybe you want to do, if, if something goes under a certain amount, um, I mentioned is inactivity. Again, inactivity is, is an interesting one because you know a, a lot of times we've found you know, with larger deployments that keeping track of the adapters in the field, especially USB-based adapters, um, a lot of times those things kind of have legs, and so you, sometimes they might end up in a drawer somewhere, and it turns out they haven't been used in you know 60, 90 days. This is an, a way for you to get an alert that this device has not been used in a long time, and you can track it down and basically you know cancel that plan or reach out to the user and find out why have they not used that device. Okay, So let me jump back here and then I'll, I'll get to the questions here. Um, again, that, that was pretty quick overview. I, I knew it wouldn't take 45 minutes, but I think the concept of what we're doing um, should be fairly straightforward. It is available today. So mobile diagnostics is available. We've kind of you know, are just now really starting to make a lot of noise about it. Um, we've talked to some direct customers. We've done some direct demos. Um, but, but again, it is currently available. And you know, one of the nice things with us is we welcome testing out solutions before you purchase them. So feel free to reach out to us for an evaluation, and we can certainly do that. So again, the best, the best note there is, is just reach out to sales at netmotionwireless.com or if you know your sales representative, then reach out to them directly. So let me get to the questions here. OK, several questions came in. Um, so great question. Um, ho hopefully, I kind of answered this one a little earlier. But, but again, the question came in in regard to locality. So, so think about it this way. Locality is essentially, like I mentioned, the vehicle to deliver the feature. So even if you don't need locality, and maybe maybe you don't even have cellular. Maybe the, the features in locality are, are not necessarily things that you really need. Um, by purchasing diagnostics, you get locality. So you get those features. And that is, is it's a nice mechanism for us to add um, additional diagnostics, additional alerting. You know, just the, the architecture of that product is, is gave us the ability to quickly do that. Um, rather than trying to do it inside of the mobility product. We also wanted to keep it independent. So again, you could use this with any VPN. It does not have to be a mobility VPN. 
if it is, you get the added functionality of you know sort of right clicking on the icon as well as validating that the VPN connection is there, but it's not a requirement. Um, do, 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 do. Another question. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, great, someone's interested in evaluation. We'll, we will definitely follow up with you for sure. Um, does this allow us to test group policy on our domain? That's a, an excellent question. So, so one of the nice things about us adding, you know, a diagnostics module is now that it's there, we, we will have the ability to to enhance it. One of the the features that I, I believe it or not I actually submitted is the ability to run essentially script uh, run a script and send back the results. So in in your in your question or your you know the example could be um, is run this batch file and send me the results of it. And what that batch file could do is maybe it does some sort of GP update or checks your group policy for that device and sends the results up into you know the console on the cloud. Um, it's not there today, but it's definitely something that we're, we're looking at. So that's a great question. Um, another question, great question here too. Does it work only on, I'm sorry, does it work on Wi-Fi or only cellular? That's an excellent question because diagnostics is essentially network independent. So it will work on any connection. It can be even a LAN connection. It can be Wi-Fi. It can be cellular. It could even be satellite. So you know the goal of the of the product is you know that it's it is sort of a, a standalone diagnostics tool and not is not you know dependent on certain conditions. So when you think about this, if you think about um, your mobile deployment today with mobility, maybe you've got 500 users out there that are highly mobile, but potentially you have another thousand users that maybe work from home or are occasionally mobile. Diagnostics would work with both groups. So mobility is not required. The network it's, it's network independent. You could run it for any remote help desk troubleshooting. Okay. Um, another great question that came in is if I already own locality, how much is it to add? Um, well, that's a great question because the, the news is good for you. So essentially, if you have premium maintenance on locality, you will get this feature for free. So um, if this is the first time that you've heard of it, you know definitely reach out to us, and you know we can. If anything, we can validate you know your maintenance contract, um, make sure that you have access to it, and you know help you upgrade to the latest release to be able to to use this. Um, another good question: What version of locality is needed? The latest version is, is it's going to be version 3.x. Um, I th it's actually 3.0 is the one that will be released, and we're going to have another release very soon meaning next month, um, 3.10, that will also add another feature that we'll probably talk about next month, um, where we have the ability to export everything that we collect into a, a format that a, a tool such as Splunk could actually read and parse. And so it'll give you the ability, you know, if you see locality today, you might, you know, like a lot of the reports that we have in there, but you might wish that there were reports that, that currently don't exist. And what you can do is actually create your own reports. Okay. Okay. And another question that came in here. Um, da, da, da. Oh, good question. So when is it going to be released? <laughs> Again, it is out now. So so definitely um, check into check into you know getting release now. Um, one important thing for those that don't currently have locality is we do actually have a promotion running. Now, the promotion was announced um, not too long ago, and you know, I know everybody gets a lot of emails, so you may or may not have seen the promotion, but the promotion is only good until the end of this month. So it's good for another two weeks. Please reach out to sales, either sales at netmotionwireless.com, or if you, you know, are, know your particular sales rep, reach out to them, um, but do it quick. So again, the, the promotion ends in about a week and a half, and uh, it's a really good promotion. After that, starting April, um, the, the price will go up. Okay, let me see. Any other questions? Okay, it looks like the questions have, have slowly 
dive down a little bit here. Um, I, I will stay on the line if there are additional questions, so feel free to use the question bar. But for those that don't have additional questions, thank you. Um, and uh, I hope everybody is able to enjoy this new feature and is excited about it. So again, remember the promotion. So reach out to your sales rep quickly and uh, you know, take advantage of that. Um, two questions that came in, which are, are good questions. So one, can I install this on the same server as Mobility? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. And, and there's a couple of reasons why a lot of them have more to do with mobility than they do with this product. But, you know, because we know mobility is so mission critical to, you know, essentially to your business that we really do not like other, you know, database type applications running on the same um, server. So even if you have a small deployment, um, it's just not something that, that we recommend. You know, we just want to make sure mobility, you know, gets the, the majority of the processing power. Now, the good news, though, as I mentioned, is this is available in the cloud. So, you know, if you don't have another server available or another VM available, you know, just reach out to us and you, we can set you up with an instance in the cloud. It takes about three business days for us to light one up from the time you, you say go. So it's very quick and it's customized to you. You have your own login. You can add additional, you know, accounts to that login, but it's, but it's your instance. Um, another question, which is a good question, and, and maybe, David, I'll, I can follow up with you directly on this. The, the question is, is there a way to archive the info past 30 days? Um, the, currently, you know, I, I will say out of the box, <laughs> there's not a way to do that. You know, we, we sort of purposely made that number, um, you know, a, a, an item that, that we figured after past 30 days, we don't think this information is as valuable. Um, the fear also was with large deployments that, you know, for us to keep it, we have to store it in a database. And if you had 5,000 users out there and they were all running these tests every day, that could be a, a very large amount of information. But there may be a way to do it um, if, if it is a requirement. So um, I'll just ping you directly so you have my contact information. Okay. I think those were all the questions. Um, and uh, another question just came in um, from David, uh, another David. And uh, I'll probably reach out to you directly. Your question might be a little bit more complex than, than this um, webinar. So again, thanks again, everybody. Um, I, I will stay on a little bit longer, uh, but feel free to drop off. Um, and don't, I, I've said it several times now, but don't forget about the promotion.